I'm going to explain to you why your BMW N54 turbos will fail if you haven't done this. I'm going to go through and show you what the failure point is and show you how to fix it. If you have one of these cars, I highly recommend that you watch this because if you want to upgrade the turbos later on, this is really important. This is what a failed turbo looks like. I did the upgrade and the rebuild on this and the problem with it is that the thrust bearing hardware is just not strong enough for over 20 pounds of boost. So this is what it looks like. I asked this guy what happened to this and I asked him does it have some in and out shaft play or axle play however you want to put that and he told me it didn't but apparently he didn't know what he was supposed to look for. I ended up just giving this guy a whole refund just mainly because I didn't want to deal with this guy anymore and he just wanted to part ways anyway. The main thing I'm getting at here is people usually just say that the seals are bad but they don't really understand what actually goes bad in the turbo so I'm going to show you the problem here. These two pieces right here are the same as an OEM turbo and these I had developed to be an upgrade. This right here is 14 millimeter in diameter, and this also is 14 millimeter in diameter. The problem isn't this piece that, I've never seen this piece have the problem where it fails on that side. It's always this piece, the smaller one. And I'll show you what it looks like flipped around. This piece right here, the OEM piece, is only 10 millimeter. And then this piece that I had developed is 14 millimeter. Those pieces ride on this bearing here. And the problem that happens is because this is so small riding on here, it doesn't have enough ground clearance on the bearing to keep it from pushing all the way through the bearing. So that's the failure point. It's mainly this part. I've never seen this part have a problem, but we upgraded it anyway, so it has more surface area on the bearing. But also, since I went ahead and upgrade, was upgrading that, I developed a TDO3 upgraded bearing that is similar to the upgraded TDO4 series. I had to change the inside diameter to be smaller than the TDO4 series to match the TDO3 collar right there. For the rebuild kits, we now include oil feed o-rings and a drain o-ring. I mainly started doing this because I had some people install as turbos without replacing those parts and what happened with one of the customers was that he put the these original o-rings in there which are not very expensive but the thing is he wanted to get the car going the same day and the issue became that he used silicone on the o-ring. The silicone got down stuck in the thrust bearing and it caused a serious thrust bearing failure same day that he put the turbos on that guy also sent the turbos back and then i gave him a refund too mainly in that case i didn't want to do business with that guy anymore just because he the way mainly because the way he acted he kept on acting like it was all my fault if you do the upgraded turbos or run more than 20 pounds of boost you're going to need the upgrade rebuild kit so I'll link to the upgraded rebuild kit in the description box. Now that I've educated you on the rebuild kit, one other thing that you need to do, it's the bearing housing does have to be machined for the collar. So I'll show a quick clip of how that's done. I have the upgraded BMW turbos on my car, so I have a 335XI. I have a couple videos on that one, and a couple things I want to mention. I run the Wedge Stage 2 Plus tune, and I haven't had any problems with the thrust bearing filling, but I'm only running 18 pounds, and I did hit 21 pounds a couple times, but I have had no issues doing, uh, with the factory bearing filling. But there's a lot of people that I did builds for that did have that problem. And I just think the main problem or source of the issue there is running over 20 pounds and a combination of using five weight motor oil. 
I'm using 1040 in mine, but I'm planning to step it back down to 1030. The problem I see with running 1040 is it is aluminum block, so it's going to run a little bit cooler. And I just don't think it really needs anything more than 1030. But I don't think that you should put anything less than 1030, like anything fly weight related. Because I think the issue is that the turbos, especially when you start increasing the boost, they get a lot hotter than an aluminum block because they're still iron. And the issue with that is the turbos being so hot, running high boost, the car was just never made to run that higher boost than stock so yeah you could probably get away with five weight oil from the factory on factory boost but when you start up in the boost it's a whole lot more likely that your turbos are going to leak or blow the seals because of the turbo getting much hotter and the oil thinning out much quicker now as far as just the seals leaking that is pretty common on these cars but i think it's more of neglect and abuse and not running thick enough oil so i highly recommend just bumping your oil up to 10w30 because we're already on this topic there's a guy on amazon that left me a bad review saying that the collar didn't fit properly on the shaft but it does fit perfectly fine i've never had that problem that he's talking about i think the issue that he was talking about was because he probably used a hammer on the shaft because this guy also bought some other parts from me and he took the wastegate bushings and pounded them in with a hammer and I sent him those for free just to kind of help him out but he still didn't remove the negative review on the rebuild kit though I've never had any such problem that he's talking about and I wouldn't mind trying to help him out do the rebuild but there's nothing else I can do if he doesn't want to talk to me about it.